Hi guys, I've promised you this video a little bit earlier uh, when I was reviewing uh, digital to analog converter by SMSL uh, number model number D200 that was allowing uh, to use external uh, clock and the same goes for PL200T uh, CD transport by SMSL uh, both of those guys were actually allowing you to use external clock let's take a look at that uh, because I actually have them here PL200 and T transport you can connect external 10 MHz reference clock and the same goes for the D200 from the same series uh, this is digital to analog converter and this also allows you to connect external reference master clock now the thing is that SMSL actually uh, manufactures something like that and this is a brand new device I think this is the first time they are manufacturing external master clock it's quite heavy and I've already opened it up for the uh, later uh, part of the review uh, it's called G1 master clock generator uh, nothing interesting on the front except for a very small LED hidden here and in the back of the device, do not mind the sounds because as I've told you it's already open up, uh, we have four channel external 10 MHz clock outputs. Uh, interestingly, this device uses two power sources, internal linear power supply or DC power supply if you happen to have something that has better parameters than the internal power supply, you can use it with this external clock generator. Uh, you may have noticed one thing, uh, that there is no power switch whatsoever. Yes, that's correct, the clock starts uh, to work right after we will connect the power source and it just works. And uh, what this actually is. Uh, the external clocks, 10 MHz generators, are not used uh, to, let's say, synchronize uh, your audio devices, like those guys, uh, but uh, they are used to control phased locked loops for the internal clock generators that are inside the um, uh, devices. Usually they have uh, either uh, 44.1 kHz uh, or 48 uh, kHz or both of uh, them uh, inside implemented, and the idea is that 10 MHz clock is controlling the accuracy of those uh, internal clocks. Uh, now, this is a digital device because the output is just a square wave, so it doesn't require uh, a long uh, burning time. Uh, it's something like a couple of hours just to check if everything is working fine and there are no um, problems with temperature or, or anything um, damaged. Uh, so we don't have to uh, have it for, uh, not exactly playing, but working for a week or two. Internally, this guy is using something called OCXO. So this is Oven Controlled Crystal Oscillator. The idea is that the crystal oscillators uh, have some kind of stability level and uh, you want to have the oscillator to be as precise as possible and one of the factors that is influencing the precision of the oscillator is external temperature so what do you do to achieve the best precision is you actually produce a, let's say oven uh, so a place a device that controls the temperature so the oscillator itself uh, will be relying only on your temperature that you are controlling with oven and not on the external temperature that will be changing with air temperature or something like that. Uh, and we have OCXO uh, internally here. Uh, that kind of uh, clock, OCXO, is also used for the radio astronomy, uh, for, by the radio amateur, amateurs, for the uh, radio receivers and transmitters. So it's not only used in the audio world, actually, uh, the smallest part of the OCXO uses lies uh, with audiophile world. Uh, let's talk about the parameters of the device. I will actually show you the specification. SMSL specification. 
Uh, the interesting thing here is that uh, this is uh, allowing us to use uh, both types of um, cables, 50 and 75 ohms uh, BNC cables, uh, and that's obviously square wave, 3.5 uh, volts peak, and yeah, the power consumption is very low, as you can see during heating, when the oven is reaching the design temperature, it's consuming 20, sorry, 12 uh, watts, and the normal use uh, when the temperature is stabilized is just few watts, so that's why we don't have any kind of uh, power switch here. It's uh, designed to be running all of the time with the uh, power uh, connected uh, and uh, with the device on. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Uh, if you're into clocks, uh, you can compare the stability of the clock. Now, let's get back to the device. <coughs> uh, I've told you about the inputs, I've told you about uh, oven controlled oscillator. Now let's take a look inside. Uh, this is full metal CNC build, uh, high quality chassis, very thick and it's quite heavy. Uh, on the back of the device we can see the standard uh, silicon legs that I've liked so much uh, in other 200 series uh, devices because uh, they are not only dampening vibrations but they are also um, prohibiting the device uh, from sliding. Uh, they are very resistive and they will not allow the device to slide. In, open, in order to open the lower plate you need to remove four screws in the corners and then you will see something interesting. Now, you can see why this thing is so heavy, especially compared to other devices from the series, because it's using very thick solid aluminum parts that are uh, working uh, as a shield, uh, because you want to have as little EMI, as little interference of any type inside the clock, master clock, as possible. So, we have an EMI filter uh, on the uh, power, uh, then we have a linear power supply, again with toroidal, toroidal transformer placed within a very thick shielding, and we have the actual uh, board for the clock. Uh, we have a small LED connector that I've disconnected earlier, this one is controlling the uh, front uh, LED, and the front LED uh, can be lighting up with blue or red. The blue light means that it's powered from AC here and the red light would mean that it's powered from the DC connector, DC barrel connector here. Uh, when, the red, uh, when the blue or red light is blinking it means that the oven is heating up and it's reaching the operational temperature. Now I've already removed the screws for the board, that's why uh, I wasn't powering the device earlier, uh, after we will talk about the build, I will close the device, I will screw them back and I will turn the device on so you will see how it actually looks when it's working. In order to remove PCB you need to unplug this, uh, pl this flat connector and remove the screws, then you have to slide the board out like that. So, another interesting things here. The first one, this is some kind of foam uh, that's placed inside of the metal, solid metal block, and this is actually used to keep the temperature stable. Uh, we also have uh, here a silicon pad, thermal pad, for those stabilizers here. So, we have two large EPCOS capacitors, each one of them is rated for 2200 microfarads. Uh, we have a lot of Nippon chemical capacitors here. Uh, one, I don't know what that is, looks like a capacitor, but maybe it's not, probably not. Uh, I don't know what that is, actually. If you have an idea, give me a shout in the comments. Uh, and we have our oven controlled oscillator. Uh, this one is marked with SMSL SC OCXO 
and that's the frequency. It's also bearing the VMV mark. Uh, this is the brand label of the high quality equipment by SMSL. Uh, and as usual, uh, we have sanded uh, chips here. This guy, this guy, this guy, this, 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 and this guy. So basically, almost, well, not almost, every single I see uh, inside, no, oh, sorry, with the exception for that one, had been sanded down. Uh, but uh, we uh, will probably have uh, buffers here. Uh, you can read about that on the product uh, product page. Uh, SMSL says that uh, each uh, output channel is buffered uh, to provide uh, to provide uh, uh, how should I say that correct uh, load uh, for the device connected with the BNC cable. Uh, yeah, and that's it. So, not much to see here, and that's actually good, because this is a very simple device. This is a clock generator. Uh, what we want to have in a clock generator is good EMI shielding, stable power supply, and stability. So, let's close that guy like that. Uh, yeah, as you can see, I'm sliding this inside. And that's it, we will just need to connect the flat cable and uh, place the screws back. Uh, give me a second, but uh, yeah, give me a second. Okay, so we are back. Let's connect the power cable and let's take a look at the startup and the heat up process. Uh, as I've told you earlier, there is no power switch whatsoever, so we are just connecting the power source and uh, as you can see, it started to blink blue in here. It's a quite discreet light, it doesn't draw much attention to itself. And the SMSL says that the stabilization will take about two minutes. So we will see about that. We should be able to see the reflection, yes, it's blinking now. And in the meantime, I will tell you about the sound quality changes. So this guy can be used not only with uh, D200 CVs that we have here, but also with top of the line VMV SMSL products and also with a number of uh, other devices. Uh, I was checking it out uh, also with my uh, Gustav uh, digital to analog converter and it was working as well as the clock that I already have. Uh, that's also uh, OCXO. So now, why do we connect that kind of master clock and what the tight control over internal clocks uh, by face locked loop, lock, uh, sorry, face locked loop brings to the table when it comes to the sound quality. Uh, there is a couple of things and they are actually uh, working the same way with every single device I've tried this clock on. So, the first thing that you will notice is additional clarity. Uh, the sound will be more transparent, more precise, with more air between instruments. Also, the sound staging will improve. The locations of all instruments will be more precise with better definitions. Uh, the external master clock uh, will also bring uh, additional resolution. Uh, you will be able to hear better all the small nuances, all of the small sounds that are happening in the front or in the back of the sound stage. Uh, Another thing uh, that uh, this guy brings to the table is airiness and transparency in the treble. Uh, it's like an instant uh, lowering up of the noise floor. Everything gets cleaner, everything gets better defined and uh, with higher resolution. So, yes, it brings only the good things to the table. Now. Uh, how does uh, how much does this uh, goodies uh, costs? The thing is that uh, the current price on Aushida is five hundred and twenty nine dollars, uh, and that's a regular price. Aushida follows uh, the usual sales uh, during the year, so you'll be able to get that one uh, cheaper. And I've seen that it's already available for uh, local European distributors as well. But when I was checking for the lowest price, the Arshida price was the best one. Uh, and that included shipping. 
uh, very fast shipping. So I got one as I got uh, other uh, 200 CVs units uh, from Alshida webshop. Uh, yeah, so it's not exactly cheap, uh, but this uh, brings, um, and I've told you that uh, with my D200 review, I don't really like to use this word, but this little guy brings dramatic changes to the sound quality of digital to analog converters and SMSL PL200T uh, CD transport. Uh, and it's not a small change. As I've said, I don't like it, but the word that comes to my mind is dramatic. Uh, the D200 digital to analog converter is like instant level up. Uh, if you check my older reviews, uh, you will see my review for Gastart R26 R2R digital to analog converter. And with R2R uh, digital to analog converters, the change is... Uh, even more than dramatic. Uh, they are instantly getting a lower noise floor. They are instantly getting tons of details that were previously lost. So for my R26, when I owned it last year, this was the single biggest upgrade I could get and it completely transformed that digital to our converter. And the same happened to the uh, D200 uh, SMSL uh, digital to analog converter that I've reviewed recently and uh, as you probably know I'm using master clock with my uh, current gas up digital to analog converter because that's how good these devices are uh, and it's still stabilizing it's still stabilizing so it's probably less than uh, two minutes right, right now uh, yeah and that's why this guy should be uh, powered on constantly. Uh, the fact that it's stabilizing right now, it doesn't mean that it's not working. It will be working just fine, and uh, you probably won't be able to hear that it's stabilizing because it will uh, already surpass the quality of your internal digital to analog converter clocks, even if it's not in a stable temperature. Uh, if it will be powered on for some time, it will be lit constantly with red light for the DC input or blue light for the AC input. And that's basically it. Uh, the master clock, external master clock, is something that I recommend very highly. If you only have the equipment that allows you to connect external clock generator, uh, get one get one because these guys they may be not cheap but they are good and they are uh, produced they are manufactured for a reason they will instantly upgrade your system yeah so i hope you like this video it was not exactly a review but you've seen uh, what it brings to the table i hope so and i hope uh, that uh, you find this video helpful if it did help you, you are more than welcome to buy me a beer or um, sorry, to buy me a beer via uh, PayPal links that are below the video or the YouTube super thanks that are also available uh, down below. Uh, again, all necessary links in the video description, uh, all information on my test setup system details in the video description. If there will be anything interesting to add, uh, if there will be anything interesting that will came up, that will come from the uh, from our discussions um, in the comments, I will also add that to the video description. Uh, and that's it. Thank you, guys, and I hope you'll have a great day ahead of you. See you next time.